divine truth frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and public. The subject of this session is spirits. This is session one. How can spirits influence people on earth? Well, because spirits themselves are people, they have the same ability to influence people on earth as we, any other person on earth, has the ability to do. So at the moment, we, I have the ability to talk to you and I can influence you by what I say. A spirit can talk to you as well and influence you through what they say. You can hear them through your spirit body's ears and sometimes that even gets translated into a physical voice and you can hear them as a result. Um, at the moment, you can see me and what I do might influence you. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same with a spirit. You can see a spirit through your spirit body's eyes. They can see you. And so, of course, if they can see you and communicate with you, they have the ability to influence you. They might be able to transmit images to you and give you thoughts and feelings and images that cause you to act in a different way than you would normally act. So they have the ability to transmit information to you, whether that be feelings or thoughts or images, pictures, videos. And all of these things we have the ability to do right now on the physical and we think for some reason that once a person died, they no longer have that ability. Mm -hmm. But the reality is their ability to do such a things increases. So now that they have an increased ability to do such a thing, we can see what's really, we can see that there's a potential for influence. If we just stop yep. for a moment. Yeah. Okay. So there's a couple of things you were saying there mm -hmm. that I find interesting. You were saying first um, that, for example, you here on earth could influence me by saying certain things or... Um, Doing certain things, threatening you with certain things. There's right. all sorts of methods of influence that I can bring to bear upon a person given if I have the motivation. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm, not, if I'm not a very loving person and I've got a negative motivation, I could even be violent towards you and that might cause you to go into fear and do certain things. So there's all sorts of things a person on earth that we can see can do in order to influence another person on earth. Yeah. The same applies to a spirit. They can do any of those same things. They mm -hmm. can threaten you with violence. They can drop thoughts into your mind. They can have you listen to certain things. They can badger you. They can browbeat you. They can push you around. They can manipulate you in exactly the same way as anyone on earth would have been able to do. And so you said that they can do it actually more. Why is that? Mostly because they're unseen yes. and because, because we're not aware of their of the fact that they're not being you know that they're not that they're there we we're not aware they're there and as a result of our lack of awareness we are more open to you know to doing what they suggest if we were if we could see them we would probably be check them out a bit more and be more <laughs> circumspect also because a lot of people assume that anything they hear through their ears or whatever eyes that comes from God or comes from, you know, Jesus or comes from some spirit who they can trust, they can't see the spirit and they can't feel them. Mm -hmm. So the majority of times these spirits are claiming to be someone they're not and yet they're influencing people to do certain things on the earth that the people willingly do because they believe in something completely different. If they could see them, they probably wouldn't do it because a lot of times the spirits doing this are in a very dark, dingy condition. They look terrible. They have a lot of emotions of rage and anger and other evil emotions, really, and that we can't generally sense. We're often terrified of them. And, and so we're manipulated into doing what they want oftentimes. Mm. OK, so I, I want to, if that's OK, just to, um, ask you some clarifiers sure. about what you just said. Sure. So you give, give the example of, say, you come up to me and say, oh, my gosh, if you don't run out the door, it's going to, the, the ceiling's going to drop on you right now. Mm -hmm. or you, 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 so I'm influencing you. Yes. Yeah. You tell me a statement that... May or not, may not be true. <laughs> it may or may not be true, but it incites fear inside of me and yes. that's... Then I, then I, and you might act. I might act, hmm. but if you're in front of me and I can see you, I can go, Who is this fellow telling me this thing? And on top of that, if you it's... can actually see the sky fall or the roof falling down, <laughs> yeah. then uh, of course you'd probably act, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I can discern more based on 
who who's telling me and I whether I'm, I'm sincere you can t you can test my sincerity through my facial expressions the feelings you feel from me how I'm acting mm -hmm. all of these ways of testing my you know sincerity sincerity and I also have the added bonus of knowing that somebody's actually telling me this because you and said two sorry and in our case we've known each other for six or seven yep. years now yes there's this level of trust that's been you know you know now that yes. oh, i'm never going to lie to you i'm never going to harm you and so if i'm telling you get out of the house now <laughs> there's a pretty good chance you need to get out of the house yes. now, right? i probably wouldn't ask you for many clarifiers no. <laughs> because i already trust you exactly yes. um but then you said there's two things that can happen when this interaction happens with someone that we can't see. Mm -hmm. The first you said is that I could just believe that, oh, if I hear a voice inside of my head, God's speaking to me and I should do it. Or someone very wise and all-knowing mm. is telling me this and I should do the will of God or do the bidding of mm. someone who's more important or special. Yeah. And you're saying that that's not very reliable always because... No, but it's also based on a false belief too. The false belief is that God communicates through a voice mm -hmm. and that's not true. God never communicates to anyone through a voice. God only communicates with the expression of love, God's love. And that's the only way in which God communicates. And if we're not sensitive to love, we're never going to hear God. The reality is, too, that whenever it's claimed that we hear a voice, uh, that's God's or some other high spirit, most of the time it's not. It's, a, it's somebody who's being deceiving. Um, and that, that's a sad thing because we generally can't tell. We, we believe certain things and we can't tell. So that's, that's the, the point that you're making, that we can't necessarily discern who's speaking to us. No. The For the majority of people on the planet, they don't know. Yeah. You know, like I've, I've sat in, 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 even in mediumistic circles where a person says they're channeling a certain type of spirit and I know the spirit that's being channeling because I, I either see them or feel them is very, very much darker than the person's claiming them to be. Mm -hmm. And often, you know, like in many cases, I've talked to spirits who claimed initially to be like these angels of light and eventually I found that they were, you know, through, through interaction with them, eventually they admitted that they were in the hells of the spirit world and just were using people to harm different things on earth and were using people to get certain emotional addictions met. And uh, they went from being this high spirit in the conversation down to being what they really were. And this happens all the time. And unfortunately, most of the mediums even who communicate with spirits have no way of knowing who they're actually communicating with. I've spoken to mediums who spoke to, who spoke to spirits and then during the discussion they worked out that their guide who they believed was in the high dimension was actually uh, an earthbound spirit who'd been with them all of their life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course mediums who hear all of that become very distressed, naturally so, because they've been lied to mm -hmm. by these spirits all their life and they've been deceived. And, of course, that then causes them to be quite concerned and, and often quite distressed. Naturally so. Mm -hmm. um, but it's because of the lack of perception. Yeah. It's because of the lack of ability to scientifically test what, who, who, who they're actually communicating with. And uh, there was a second scenario that you gave that I mm -hmm. would like to ask you to explain further. And that mm -hmm. was where you said that actually a spirit can influence me without me even knowing that somebody is saying something to mm. me. Mm. So I c they could scream at me, if you don't run out the door, the, the ceiling's going to fall on your head. And I don't even necessarily know that a spirit has said that to me, but I suddenly feel afraid and that I must run out the door and that my own feeling is the ceiling is going to fall. Yes. How does that happen? Well, that happens because of a lot of openness that we may have. We, we firstly, from the time we, we were conceived, we're assigned a guardian by God, actually. So we have a spirit permanently assigned to us who basically is there to protect our life, to, to help us live as long a life as possible. <laughs> and that particular spirit's role is to inform us of impending events that may affect the, our life and how, how, you know, whether we can survive. And those particular spirits usually have a very good rapport with us. They have a very close connection with us all of our life because they've been with us from the time of conception onwards. And therefore, they have the ability often to drop thoughts or feelings into us without us even being aware that they're the feelings and thoughts of the spirit who is with us. Now, these guardians are not malevolent spirits. They are spirits who have been assigned to us 
who are in a certain condition of love that exceeds our own and they have our interests at heart, they love us enough to have our interests at heart and they don't have a perception or a conception of their own interest over, the to over us and as a result they're assigned to us because they have these particular characteristics. So that kind of a spirit you, you would often not even know as a person who's influencing you and uh, they'll be influencing you. They can even influence where you drive, what you do, where, where, when you step out on the road, you stop all of a sudden, then the car comes past. So all of those events mm -hmm. are all influenced by this kind of a spirit. Then you have a groups of spirits who are malevolent, who are also able to influence you in a similar way. And these kind of spirits uh, are influencing us through different emotions that we have that are unhealed within ourselves. And these particular emotions might be we have a lot of fear, for example, and our fear leaves us open to a specific group of influences. So somebody could constantly threaten our fear, threaten our fear, and threaten our fear, and by, use, by using threats against our fear, mm -hmm. cause us to choose to make certain decisions that we wouldn't have normally made if we weren't conscious of that particular fear. So how does, but how do they do that if I can't hear them? Well, the emotional openness can, uh, it, that we have to a certain type of emotion causes an opening to all of our thought systems and all of our picture-based systems, all of our imagination, as well as all of our feelings. As a result of that, a spirit can use any one of those techniques to influence us. They can give us thoughts, they can give us pictures, and they can give us feelings that might motivate us to make different choices, depending on our emotional openness to receive such things. So, so for example, uh, just earlier I was, I was being interviewed by somebody and I was being influenced in the interview because of my emotional openness to somebody else's will above my own. Mm -hmm. As soon as I close that down, now I can't be influenced by their emotional openness or their will. I'm only influenced by my own will. And spirits under those circumstances, because I have an openness to the will of others above my own, they, I have an emotional openness still to being influenced along that direction. And that's how spirits manipulate and can influence all of the different things that occur in our lives. Mm, but you're saying that energetically, I just have an openness if I'm open to a certain emotion, I can receive it from another person or another spirit? Yeah, for example... Even if I'm unaware of that influence? Yeah, if I give a, people an example that they can probably um, you know, relate, relate to, to better... It. If, if you're with, I don't know if you've noticed, but if you're with a person who's really afraid and they speak about all the things they're afraid of, you will either get to two points. You'll either go along with them eventually and become afraid of the same thing yourself <laughs> yeah. or you'll get so annoyed with them that you don't want to spend any time with them. That's yeah. what you'll do. Yeah. Now, the reason why we do that, why, why do we have such a polarised feeling with them? Well, it's because on one hand, when we go along with their fears, we also have certain fears along a specific vein that they are basically influencing through their discussion. And as a result, our fear is heightened as they discuss that particular issue. Mm -hmm. And this kind of thing happened during 9-11 with the attacks on um, America in, in New York. Everyone was watching. There's billions of people around the world watching what was happening. And as a result, the heightened fear of each individual watching what's going, what's, what's going to happen next and so forth, allows then other people to say, what well, did you hear about this and did you hear about that? And in those moments, drop additional thoughts of fear inside of the person. Yeah. And so it's quite, then, quite easy to manipulate the person after that point. So if you see what the American government has done since 9-11, it has used this fear to control the American people quite significantly by, by using that fear-based influence, reminding everybody of that fear-based influence, and then even engaging laws, more laws, and in fact laws that the American people probably wouldn't have passed before 9-11 have been passed since. Mm -hmm. A restriction of their own freedoms have, have been passed since as a result of the heightened fear that exists in people about such events. This is a method of control. It's a method of being able to manipulate a person's will into doing something they wouldn't normally have done. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think if you're invisible and have that ability, then, of course, uh, there are heightened dangers of that occurring. If you've got the ability to suggest thoughts, the ability to suggest pictures, the ability to you know, supply things to the imagination, 
the the ability to actually even communicate oral, orally, you know, through through the it, yeah. through the person's ears, then then you have the ability to make a lot of suggestions that you might not have had if you didn't have those particular abilities. And if your personal, if the person doing it is malevolent in their nature or wants to influence the will of another person, then they'll take the opportunity to do it. Mm. There's no question they would mm. take the opportunity to do it and this is what spirits do. Mm. 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 Thank you. Yeah. So I feel that for the majority of people on earth, they are completely unaware of how much they're being influenced by spirits all the time. When we see the spirits around the, uh, m most people, there's usually three or four or five or more spirits, in fact, around m almost every single individual person on the earth influencing every single choice and decision that they make. And it's only by clearing away the, the ways in which we're open to it that we will actually close down the influence. And if you think about it, it's exactly the same if it's the influence of a person we can see. It's only by clearing, out, by clearing out the ways in which we, um, you know, absorb all of this influence, by clearing away the emotional reasons why we absorb it, that we'll actually stop being influenced by a person on earth. So, so we've got to stop seeing the spirits as some kind of evil, malevolent, you know, creatures who are trying to harm us. The reality is they are the same as the people on earth with the same, with similar motivations, and uh, you know, on Earth there are people with motivations that are evil, right? The way to people with the motivations that are good, and the same applies in the spirit world. There's spirits that are motivations are evil, right? The way to spirits whose motivations far exceed the goodness of any person on Earth, and and what we've got to do or learn how to do is to be perceptive to what kind of motivations we are under. Yes, and I, it's, it's fascinating to me uh, the level of influence we can be under simply through denial of our own condition. Yes. I often think about my life up until a few years ago, perhaps even less, you know, perhaps only a year ago, yeah. and how much, my, um, how much my actions and my words were influenced by the desires of others. Mm. And that was not something I was conscious of, but mm. emotionally, I was sensitive to the desires of others mm -hmm. and I had a deep fear of displeasing others. And mm. so it directed the course of my entire life and my actions. Mm -hmm. um, and that was I, like I was in denial about that happening, but that's what was happening. Mm. And it's fascinating to me that this whole thing can happen with spirits also. Exactly. Simply through the same dynamic, through exactly. my denial of... Uh, fear within me, yep. which leaves or me... Or shame or any other emotion, sadness even. You know, yes. You can be manipulated through sadness. If you want to avoid your sadness and I want to get some, something you know, from me. something from you, all I need to do is manipulate your sadness and in order to prevent it, you'll do a certain thing. It's I think people picking guaranteed. up each other in bars do that all the time, of don't course. they? Of someone's course. sad and someone else wants some sexual company and they exploit the sadness in the other. In That's order exactly to, what happens in yes. the majority of cases. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and so um, it's just fascinating, isn't it, how our emotional sensitivity is at play all of the time, even yes. if we're not consciously aware of what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. And this is the problem that we have on the earth, is that because we are suppressing our emotions very strongly most of the time, we don't realise how much influence we are under from other people who we can actually see, but even more so from other people that we, we cannot see. see. Mm. Mm.